quick recap to understanding the general barriers uh, sorry the english language barriers to communication in terms of homonyms homophones and homographs homonyms homo means uh, same nims means the name so when i say light it is with regards to same spelling same pronunciation but different meaning i'm feeling light and can you switch on the light uh, homophones when we talk of phones means sound so i say uh, your and your can you please come here that is coming here and in terms of the fact that i hear you that's with regards to listening so where what happens here is the pronunciations for it the same spelling is different and the meaning of it is also different and last we have what is we known as homographs when we talk of homographs graphs as in the pronunciations so when i say the word minute or can you wait so please wait for me the spelling is different for wait for me versus this is my wait the pronunciation is the same and the meaning is different that's it. that's where we finish off in understanding the language barriers general and specific to english language now we move to understanding the third type of barrier to communication which is which regards to social cultural barriers uh, now we have moved to the third type of barrier to communication which is a social social cultural barrier to communication what happens in social cultural barrier to communication as the word suggests it's with regards to somebody's uh, the way a person behaves in a certain society as per the culture of what he or she belongs to and in general we can say the culture is the set of values or uh, the kind of behavior that a particular community whether it be in terms of nationality whether in terms of religion whether it be some subculture how they behave the the norms the traditions it can be divided it can be understood as the cultural aspect now the very important cultural aspect the very first kind of differentiation is between the male and female uh, the way the males are treated across in our society is way different from how females are treated uh, males someone on the line of being given a superiority uh, status uh, they are uh, things in 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 larger section of the world uh, is where the guys are the decision makers uh, they are the ones who inherit the family property the, uh, the ancestral uh, properties uh, of course the situations are changing uh but still when we can compare it with the western countries in western countries the way the male and female are they are at par in the eastern whereas the middle eastern countries uh the females kind of are still one level lower uh, we also read the same thing in the newspaper you know that there may be a lady female ceo versus a male female, a male or ceo of an organization but in terms of the wage Uh, the parity of differences is quite uh, evident. So, socio-cultural parameters, and that's how it's been for ages. The males always have a superior hand. They have, uh, in a way, they also have a superiority complex. Sorry for all the males out there, but then that's how they are, right? Uh, is a girl who basically leave their uh, family and go to stay with the guy's family uh, after marriage. So that's how we can say that there is a male and female divide. So when there is there is a communication between a male and a female, uh, maybe somebody who is uh, an Indian versus in Western. So where Western the girl and boy are at par versus an Indian where the girls one level lower to the guy, their communication can act as a difference. Second, we understand from the world perspective is the Eastern and Western uh, world para differentiations or breakup. Uh, the Western countries are more progressive. Uh, their outlook towards life is completely different. They have more of an open culture kind of a policy. Whereas in the Eastern culture, in the Eastern places like India, as one of the examples, we have a lot of more respect. uh you know we still greet our elders we stay in a joint family uh we do not uh, believe in taking individual decisions it's more like a family uh, orientation concept that we have there as in western country uh, as soon as a child turns 16 he is expected to probably start finding a job for himself looking after his education uh the concept of getting married also when we talk of the eastern western culture in the western culture apparently speaking it's the girls and guys responsibility to gather in money and to celebrate the wedding as per their uh, financial capability whereas when we look at these eastern eastern culture specifically when we talk of india in india uh it's it's in a way the parents responsibility to get their kids married to look after the expenses of the wedding functions so these two parameters we can say the eastern western world culture uh, can act as a barrier to communication and when they are communicating on these two grounds it's going to be a hell lot of a difference 
Then we come down to the North and South Indian Delhi. We know that in North India, the kind of weather, the kind of climatic conditions, the kind of food preferences, the kind of uh, dressing preferences is way different than what it is in the South. The North people uh, are very comfortable with the whole concept of drinking. No functions apparently have a, a, a say without the alcohol parameter into it. Whereas in the South, alcohol is in a way prohibited. They wouldn't have, uh, uh, you know, alcohol served at the religious functions, weddings, uh, some neat X, Y, Z. Uh, when we talk of the North parameter, the, the food habits that they have, they believe in eating proper roti, sabzi, dal, chawal concept. When we look at the South, they are more into the rasam, rice, vada, idli, that kind of food preferences. In terms of the wedding, uh, not just wedding, but in terms of the regular clothes also, uh, we know that uh, the north northern uh, part of India has extreme climates, too hot, too cold. So depending on being too cold, they have those long coats. Uh, they have a house that's installed, uh, pre-installed with heater as well as an AC. Whereas in the south, the concept of heater doesn't exist only. It's more or less like pretty hot throughout the season so they prefer wearing lungis in, the, in, in their houses and even to certain weddings they may wear good quality, good uh, uh, looking do, uh, dhotis or lungis as they say but they wouldn't shy away from wearing the same so those levels we say that uh, we are connect, we are differentiating uh, in terms of the social cultural aspect then we look at the greeting concept. Now in India, uh, whenever we meet strangers or whenever we meet somebody who is, you know, in terms of our status higher, whether it be in terms of the hierarchy of an organization or in terms of meeting informally some elderly relatives, we always greet them with a namaste. Uh, we always keep a certain distance uh, when we are communicating with them. But with Western culture, they believe in proper handshake and there maybe the physical distance or the proximity is not much of an issue. A girl and boy can stand close to each other and it will not be taken wrong. So the way you greet, okay, um, in terms of India and China. So China or the Japanese people have a habit of bowing down three times and that's how they greet people. Uh, whereas in India, as I again said, it's a namaste for the Hindus or maybe for the Muslims, it's raising your hand and you know, saying salam, uh, salam alaikum salam. Right? So that's how we see that even greeting acts as a difference and depending on it, it can act as a barrier to communication. Then we move to uh, an important uh, barrier to uh, social cultural uh, barrier to communication is with regards to your uh, oculusis uh, option or, uh, as a parameter or the eye expression. Okay, uh, In India, we do not look directly into uh, an eye of somebody who is elder to us in terms of either the relationship status or in terms of uh, the hierarchy in an organization. We do not, we believe in, you know, just occasionally looking at them and most of the time it has to be down, uh, maybe here and there, but not directly into the eye. Whereas in the Western culture, if you do not look directly into the eye, they consider that to be, they'll be like, okay, you are fake listening to us or you are not giving full attention to what we are trying to say. So that way is also we say that there is a social cultural divide. We say there is a social cultural divide with regards to the emotional processes, emotional thought processes. We Indians are very expressive, whether it be birthdays, anniversaries or festivals. We believe in celebrating it as a family, as a group of people, uh, you know, uh, with the goods and bags together. Whereas in the Western culture, they believe in the individualistic approach. They are not as vocal, as emotional as we are. They wouldn't cry so easily the way we Indians cry. They don't celebrate the smallest of uh, uh, success, you know, maybe somebody getting into some of the top tier colleges or getting a desired, uh, looked after, sorted after, aspired job. So celebrations, emotions just flow when we talk of uh, the Eastern parameter, when we talk of India as a country. But in the Western culture, these things are like, okay, ha, hai, to job mil gaya, usme kya hai. Work hard for it, mil gaya, kind of concept. Right? So that's how we say that on social cultural uh, levels, we get a division. The male-female parameter, the North and South India parameter, the Eastern and Western world parameter, the eye expression parameter, the greetings as a barrier, and lastly, the emotional connect that we share with our respective set of families. That constitutes altogether put together the uh, social cultural values.
Now we move to understanding the fourth and the last that is the psychological barrier to communication. We now move to the last part of our chapter where we'll be discussing the psychological barriers. Now psychological as basically uh, suggests is the mental parameters or the mental thought processes that one has when they're communicating with the other person. So what is the very first kind of psychological barrier? that uh, comes into picture when you're communicating is the whole concept of self-attitude and all this okay self-attitude means i know everything i am the best this and that you have you have uh unnecessarily self-centered everything needs to be centering around you you know um you are the most important person things should be as per your wills and fancies so when people who have such kind of attitude the attitude and problems you know center self revolving around themselves as if they are the sun and everybody is the planets and they are revolving around them so when they have such kind of attitude and when they try to communicate they will always have a sense of you know allness in them ki mujhe sab pata hai ha ye to aisa hi hota hai ye to aise hi hota hai so you don't let the other person feel important in a communication and that is uh, one major reasons why there are miscommunication when you think you know everything when you are superior to the one you try to communicate with there will always be a sort of discomfort coming in from the other person who will not let the whole complete communication cycle be complete hence we see the self centered attitude and the concept of allness can act as a disaster in terms of communication cycle second we need to understand the concept of self image what i feel about myself in terms of the what what factors i have what qualities i have and what qualities i perceive i have right is how i portray myself so if my self image is real good i really think good about me not in the negative or uh, not in the over confident manner but in a journalistic manner that okay i am good with this i have a certain flow that i'm good with this also and what i'm good with is what nothing is going to change what i'm good with or the other way around when i undermine my potentials or my uh, caliber to the lowest level and i never accept the fact that i am good with it people may be telling me that this is a this, this, this but i just don't believe it so the self image that i have about myself positive or negative best is to be neutral you accept that you have good things and then you you also accept that you have certain flaws but if it's on the higher side it goes up to be your self attitude the self centered attitude if it is on too low a side again people will not want to communicate with you because you're always trying to put your own self down in a communication so a well balanced kind of an attitude works then we move to understanding um the third kind of a psychological barrier from the point of view of understanding what is halo and horn effect now halo and horn um uh, in most of the fairy tales mythology we must have we would have seen uh, that when we talk of fairies we talk of angels they are they were these feathers around themselves okay cute little wings feather kind of wings and they have a light kind of a thing on their head uh is like a circle of light on their heads and they are very pure pristine right when we talk of the devil the wicked characters of our life uh they are a uh, kind of uh, reflected through people who are like black and have a lot of uh, like forms on their head so from that we have derived the concept of hollow and horn effect hollow effect since we said it's more of an angelistic a uh, fairy kind of a concept is like you like a person a lot a lot a lot so you will always tend to agree to what the person is saying that's like a hello if it will wrong be bolega so you will tend to agree to it flow with it do as he or she says whereas the opposite of it total eclipse effect known as the horn effect also is there you dislike the person so much that whatever he may tell you maybe for your betterment but since you dislike the person you are never ever going to go with what he or she said never ever going to accept his or her suggestions so when you're having a communication with people whom you like and you kind of flow with it because you really really love them okay we say that they are in the hello effect when as when you are in a conversation you do not agree with certain person even if the whole group agrees that that person is right but because you do not like him we say that you follow the on you so there are psychological barriers then we have the concept of understanding slant for polarization 
so slant as the word suggests is bending towards one side i mean in terms of communication to the person with whom your ideas thoughts likes dislikes be okay that's different from hollow and horn effect is you may have just be friends with a person but when they are having a commun- uh, conversation about uh, certain beliefs that that go against you you may even just like them but you will not like to communicate with them you will be like nahi yaar aise nahi hota hai there is a miscommunication there is a cut in the communication process and you know uh let's give an example in a group of friends uh generally uh, on path where everybody is friends with each other no one or uh, hello effect and uh, everybody is discussing about uh, uh, shahrukh khan and how he acts in you know the whole uh, idea of falling in love he be one of the bollywood superstars uh, that ways and then one of them says ke bhai kya yaar kya over acting karta hai ye hai wo hai blah 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 negative things about him so what will happen is you as a person will then not like that member of the group ki and you know, everybody love shahrukh khan how can you just not love him like very very love him uh, so how can you not love him so you know uh, then you will have uh, you will kind of slant away you will kind of bend away iske sath mujhe baat nahi karni shahrukh khan ke related because ye to uske bare mein hamesha negative bolega right so that is the whole concept of slant or polarization that's the bend away then we have something which we known uh, which is which can be understood as from the point of view of snap reactions people in general are always in some or the other hurry okay so firstly uh, snap means clicking of your fingers hey come here like that you know what is something about the fingers so um, you know snap reactions lead to the fact that since they are always in hurry they like ha ha bol bol kya bana and because to itni gai gai mein koi bol so much of a hurry to finish up the conversation or you know just listen to what he has to say and just run away from it we say that uh, in snap reactions the person tends to listen to only things that may be important to him or maybe just listen for the heck of it and then eventually forget what was spoken to him all together that's where again we play on the mind games because you are in constant hurry you're not comprehending what the person is saying and trying to move away from the conversation so with this uh, we finish off uh, the psychological barriers we we'll quickly look at it that is a self center or the oneness attitude the self image of how you perceive yourself to be right the horn and halo effect the snap reactions and last but not the least the slant or the polarization as so by and large this particular chapter we understood the various kind of barriers that lead to the communication cycle not being complete the physical barriers the psychological barriers the social cultural barriers and the semantic part of the language barriers and we now move to the next chapter where we will be discussing about the listening and hearing the two important aspects what it is let's look in the next chapter